Mars asteroid tsunami from an impact that triggered a 1,000 foot wave of blue water on our red planet, Tom Fish Express UK reports. They say that Mars had liquid water at once with oceans and lakes and rivers and this transformed into a mega tsunami after an asteroid impact. This is according to new studies. Well, we know that we've had many asteroid impacts and the moon has had asteroid impacts and it's logical that Mars would have had asteroid impacts. The asteroid impact that hit our Earth 66 million years ago, creating the Yucatan Peninsula crater 93 miles wide, that's 150 kilometers in width, in the Gulf of Mexico, resulted in a blast wave that echoed all around the world. And while the impact triggered the 300 foot high mega tsunami, a new study suggests Mars may have suffered a similar catastrophe. A mega tsunami event 3.7 billion years ago Scientists think they spotted the ground zero of where this asteroid hit. And if that's true, researchers say that uh, it adds weight to the theory that once Ma Ma Mars did have oceans, lakes, water, with implications for future researchers for alien life on Mars, that it must have had life as well. Well, many people said that Mars definitely had life because of the... Uh, ruins found on Mars. Sidonia, for example, is full of ruins and other areas as well. Dr. Francois Costard, who is a planetary geomorphologist at the French National Center for Scientific Research, says that uh, there are two successive waves that he knows of that were formed during asteroid impacts on Mars. Concerning this asteroid impact, he said it was a large-scale, high-speed tsunami. At the very beginning, a crater of 70 kilometers in diameter was created by the impact, and it expelled a huge volume of water with wave propagation at 60 miles per second. The initial wave was about 300 meters in height, which is about 1,000 feet in height. After just a few hours, that tsunami wave reached the Palio shoreline, located a few hundred kilometers from the impact crater. Finally, he says, due to the Martian ocean filling in that crater, which produced a kind of rebound, there was a second wave propagation. This is the image of the impact crater that they say that they studied, focusing their study on this the Lomonosov crater, which they think is likely to have been created by the rogue 10 mile wide space asteroid. This crater is similar to what we find here on Earth. Researchers conclude that the supposed Martian Ocean could be a good place to look for evidence of life on the planet. In other words, what could have been the area of an ocean could perhaps have signs of life, ancient life. Some people theorize that the ocean would have been fed by underground bodies of water, so the geochemical signatures of any ancient microbiology could be used to indicate basic forms of alien life, or more, more than basic, and could still be under the surface of Mars in suspected liquid rocks, liquid acquirer rocks. Now, Dr. Costard cautions against jumping to any hasty conclusions about the presence of life on Mars. He says, so was it a good condition for the presence of life? It's very difficult to say something about that, and it would be interesting to land on the surface of that crater. But before that, I think we need much more detailed studies of that impact crater and some more studies of the terrain between the crater and the lowlands, he said. The question of whether Mars may have once been a blue water planet, water, uh, again with the discovery of evidence supporting ancient tsunamis on Mars, is uh, coming to life. As we know, at one point, they, 
in the beginning of discovering and exploring Mars, the scientists told us that there was no water on Mars, and now they're somehow changing that uh, view to uh, the fact that there may be water on Mars. So this is of particular interest to NASA. NASA aims research as it's investing in uncovering evidence of water on the planet, which is, of course, an essential step along the way to supporting extraterrestrial life. Extraterrestrial meaning, of course, any future human colonies on the planet. Now, Dr. Alexis Rodriguez elaborated on the Lomonosov crater containing tsunami deposits and could serve as leading candidate for a standing site, landing site, to search for evidence of life around that area. The ocean may have been fed by catastrophic floods from underground catches of liquid water, and if that's the case, there would be sediments in the north, maybe a window into the subsurface habitability of Mars. This is what Dr. Rodriguez added. Now, uh, that's a wonderful place to land. I don't know how far that is from the Sidonia Plateau, which has the face on Mars, as we know. Various pyramids not far from there, three-sided pyramids, and uh, artifacts that seem to be constructed by an intelligent being. Uh, so perhaps be not only the Lomonosov crater, but also the Sidonia Plateau would be a good place to land. I'll leave links below for you for this on Express UK. Now, how far is Mars from Earth anyway? On average, the distance to Mars from Earth is 140 million miles, that's 225 million kilometers. That's according to NASA. But the distance to Mars from Earth is constantly changing, like a pair of cars on a racetrack. Mars and Earth orbit the Sun at different speeds. So depending on where Mars is, it could be farther or closer to us. And of course, the more logical thing would be to plan a voyage to Mars when the planet is closer to Earth. So it would be a shorter distance. It could be half the, uh, the distance, depending on its orbit. Now, according to Space.com, in 2003, Mars made its closest approach to Earth in almost 60,000 years. The Hubble Space Telescope took the opportunity to observe the Red Planet. It was only 34.6 some odd million miles from Earth. So if we wanted to pay a visit to the Red Planet, how long would it take? The answer depends on a number of things, ranging from the position of the planets to the technology that would propel us there. So how far away is Mars, as we said? Depending on which part of its uh, orbit it's on, Mars is the fourth planet from the Sun, and the second closest to Earth, Venus, is the closest to Earth. But the distance between the two planets is constantly changing as they travel around the Sun. In theory, the closest that Earth and Mars would approach each other would be when Mars is at its closest point, perihelion, and that would be around 33.9 million miles. But it's never happened in recorded history. The closest was 34.8 million miles apart in 2003. The two planets are farthest apart when they're both at their farthest from the Sun. As we know, the average distance between the two planets is 140 million miles. You can see what a big difference it is. Now, concerning how far, how uh, long would it take us? The fastest spacecraft launched from Earth was NASA's New Horizons mission, which visited Pluto in 2015. In January 2006, the probe left Earth at 36 miles per thousand miles per hour. That's 58,000 kilometers per hour, so that's pretty fast. If such a probe traveled in a straight line to Mars, the time it would take to get to Mars would be, if it's at the closest possible approach, 942 hours or 39 days, a bit over a month. And if it's at the closest recorded approach, 967 hours or 41 days, and farthest approach, 
is a huge 289 days. On average, 3,888 hours or 162 days, okay? And on average, so, you know, that's a pretty big uh, journey. But things get complicated. The problems with the previous calculations is that they measured distance between two planets as a straight line traveling through the farthest passing of Earth and Mars would involve a trip directly through the Sun. While spacecraft must, of necessity, move in orbit around the solar system star. So as you can understand, it's a big problem. Although it isn't a problem for the closest approach when the planets are on the same side of the Sun, another problem exists. The number also assumes that the two planets remain at a constant distance, that is, when the probe is launched from Earth, while the two planets are the close approach, Mars would remain the same distance away over the course of the 39 days it took the probe to travel. But in reality, the planets are continuously moving in their orbits around the Sun, and engineers have to calculate the ideal orbits for sending a spacecraft from Earth to Mars, and their numbers factor in not only distance, but also fuel efficiency. So it's not that easy. According to NASA Goodyear Space Flight Center, the ideal lineup for a launch to Mars would be to get you to the planet in roughly nine months. So there you go. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.